What if you could have an OS that's more secure than Windows, faster on older hardware, completely free and just looks familiar? Meet Zorian OS, designed specifically for Windows and Mac OS users. It makes switching to Linux effortless. And guess what? You can try it without removing Windows. Hello, I'm Weber from Tech Richard and in this video, I'll guide you step by step through the safe dual boot installation of Zorian OS. Keep both OS's switch easily and unlock a new world. So let's get started. So first, let's talk about the system requirements. So we will need a USB drive of at least 8 gigs. Then you will need a PC with Windows 10 or Windows 11 with a minimum of 1 GHz dual core processor and 2 gigs of RAM. Then you will need a minimum of 15 GB of storage. This storage depends on the Zorian OS version that you wish to install. So if you are using the core version, you will need 15 gigs for education, you will need 30 gigs, and for the pro version, you will need 40 gigs. Lastly, we will need the Zorian OS ISO file and a tool called Rufus for making a bootable USB drive. So let's proceed. First, we will begin by downloading the Zorian OS ISO file. So open any browser and go to this URL. I will provide all these links in the video description below. Here, you can find all the ISO files of any Zorian OS version that you wish to like. You can choose from Core, Education, Pro or even the Lite version. For this tutorial, I will be downloading this version. So just click on the download button and save the file to your desktop. As I have already downloaded this file, so I will skip the process. The next step is to search Rufus in a different tab. Just click on the first official link, scroll down a bit and download the Rufus application. In the meantime, insert your USB drive. Once inserted, you will see your USB drive under the device section of Rufus. Under boot selection, click on select button and locate your Zorin OS ISO that you have downloaded above. Once the ISO file is attached, just click on the start button to create your bootable USB for Zorian OS. On this pop-up, select write in DD mode and click on OK. So make sure you have nothing important saved onto this USB drive as all the data will be removed. In the meantime, click on start and search for partition and click on create and format hard disk partitions. Now we will create a separate partition on your hard drive for installing Zorian OS. So this is my primary hard drive. To create a separate partition, right click on any of the volumes. So I am using my D drive as it has enough storage. Now click on shrink volume. So since I am installing the pro version, I will keep aside 40 gigs and then click on the shrink button. Now you can see that 40 gigs of storage space have been pulled out of my D drive and that is left as unallocated. So just leave this 40 gigs of unallocated space and close your partition manager. By the time your bootable USB is being created, let me show you my system specs. For this tutorial, I am using a 12th generation i5 Intel Core processor with 30 gigs of RAM. I have a dedicated Nvidia graphics card of 8 gigs and I am running Windows 11 Pro version. As previously mentioned, you need a minimum of 1 GHz of dual core processor with 2 gigs of RAM to run your Zorian OS. Now let's wait for a while until our Zorian OS bootable USB is ready. Once your bootable USB is ready, just click on start and restart your PC. Once you restart your PC, you will need to boot into your BIOS. For booting into BIOS, you will need to press specific keys on your keyboard. You can Google your machine name and find the respective keys to boot into your BIOS. As for my Gigabyte motherboard, I have to press the delete button on my keyboard and then I will boot into the BIOS. So here, just go to boot and under boot priority options, just select your USB drive as the first priority. So this will allow our USB drive to boot our Zorian OS installation. Once done, click on save and exit and then click on save and exit setup. With this, your PC will restart and this time it will boot directly from your Zorian OS bootable USB. On this screen, just select try and install Zorian OS and press enter. You can also opt for a version with modern NVIDIA graphic drivers if you have an NVIDIA card. Now wait for a while 
and then you will see the Zorian OS logo. Now, these are some file system checks that will be performed. You can either wait for them to complete or you can also press Ctrl C to ignore these checks. So once the file system checks are complete, you will see the welcome screen of Zorian OS installation. Here, if you simply wish to try and test Zorian OS, you can click on Try Zorian OS. But for this guide, I will be installing Zorian OS on my hard drive. So I will just click on Install Zorian OS. Now select your keyboard layout and click on Continue. Here, select I don't want to connect to Wi-Fi at this time and then click on Continue button. Under Updates and Software, keep everything as default and then click on Continue button. Under Installation Type, select something else. So here, if you want to keep Zorin OS as your primary OS, you can select the first option, as it will override your Windows OS. But if you wish to keep both the Windows and Zorian OS, you will need to install Zorian OS on a separate partition. For dual booting, you will need to select something else option. Now here you will find all the drive partitions and volumes. Just look for free space which is around 40 gigs. Mm, so here it is. Once selected, click on it and press the plus icon. Here, keep everything as default and under mount point, set it to the base directory. Once done, click on OK. Now this will format your partition and make it ready for Zorian OS installation. Once done, click on the Install Now button. Now confirm writing changes to the disk and then click on the Continue again. Here, select your time zone. For me, it's India and then click on the Continue button. Here, you will have to create your Zorian OS account. So type in your full name, your username, your password and then click on the continue button. Now this will take a while and your Zorian OS installation will be complete. For me, it took around 7 to 8 minutes for the complete installation. Once the installation is complete, click on the Restart Now button. Once restarted, you will be asked to remove your USB drive. So just plug out your USB drive and press Enter again. Once restarted, you will see the boot loader. From here, you can either select your Windows or Zorian OS, whichever you want to use. So just select your desired operating system and press Enter. So you will see this boot loader every time you start your PC. You will always get the option to choose your operating system that you wish to use. So if you wish to use Windows, you can do that. Or if you wish to use Zorian OS, you can opt for the same. Once ready, you will see the login window. So just type in your password and your first look at Zorian OS is ready. You can now connect your Wi-Fi and update your Zorian OS to the latest version. To update Linux headers and packages, click on Start and then search for Terminal. Just type in the following command and press Enter. So this will now update all the Linux headers and system packages. To change the look and feel of your Zorian OS, just click on Start and search for Zorian Appearance. You can now choose the look of your Zorian OS. You can choose the Linux layout, the Mac OS layout or even the Windows layout. So depending upon your ease, you can select the one that you like. And that's it. You now have Zorin OS running smoothly alongside Windows. So enjoy the speed, security and freedom of Linux without saying goodbye to the familiar Windows setup. Dual booting gives you best of the both worlds. So now, if you wish to remove Zorian OS, just log into your Windows. Now click on Start and then search for Partition. Now click on Create and Format Hard Disk Partition. Select the 40 GB partition that you have created for Zorian OS. Just right click on it and click on Delete Volume. If you wish, you can extend this unallocated space back to your D drive. Once done, just go back to your BIOS and change the boot priority to your primary hard drive. And then you are done. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you face any issues, just comment down below and I will get back to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel for more amazing tutorials like these. I'll see you in the next one.